This is Andy Tube. Let's take a tour of my brand new, to me, Singer Model 99K. Woohoo! Look at that. You know, recently a, a Harlan, a friend of mine, lives out on the west side of Phoenix there, uh, picked up off of Craigslist, I think, uh, a Model 99. And he cleaned it up and uh, and uh, got you know got it sewing and it was quite fascinating really. One thing that he liked about it was that it had this bobbin ejector uh, lever or button, and that's what why he wanted to get one and check it out. And by him doing that, I remembered that a few years back I bought this at a pawn shop and never really looked at it. I went there to buy a different model. And I called, and they said they had it. And when I drove into Phoenix to get it, they said, oh, it had sold the day before. So they offered me this for 25 bucks. And I pulled off the cover and looked at it. And I go, yeah, it's one of those black singers. Said, yeah, okay, 25 bucks. And I came home and put it in a storeroom and literally forgot about it. But after Harlan bought his, I remembered it. And I dug it out of the storeroom and uh, took a look at it and I was going to call it small but terrible but my wife saw it and said oh that's cute that's mine so this is cute a Singer Model 99X made in 1956 in uh, the Kilboe factory in Scotland of the United Kingdom it's 22 pounds three-quarter size portable my understanding was it was the first portable machine that Singer put out um, the the bed is six inches deep and 12 inches long and from the top of the bed to the top of the spool pin is eight and a half inches and it's got that black lacquered finish with gold uh, decals and gold gold decal patterns and the name and so forth I don't know what the the pattern is called I know they had different names for different ones but um, I, I don't know them I've never really done a, a black singer I don't work on them I wasn't that interested in them before because they just seem too heavy and and bulky and uh, but this one at only 22 pounds intrigued me and I have it it's got to kind of stay in this base because it doesn't have a flat bottom the part of the hook mechanism sticks out below the bottom of the machine and it won't sit level so it either has to be in some kind of a base or a table um, it, it has a um, Let's see, they made these from 1911 to 1958. So it's got a long history. And it went electric in 1926. And uh, back then, it, to get the kit of the electric motor and the light added to your new machine, or old one, it cost the equivalent of about a month's pay in 1926. And... Uh, the motor's actually made in Canada, and it's a 0.8 amp. So it's interesting to me was it's it's uh, actually a tenth of an amp more than my favorite model 404 straight stitch, and the infamous uh, 401A uh, slantomatic and the 500A Rocketeer. Those are all 0.7, and this is a 0.8. It's got a rear rear mounted light up here that that attaches onto the back and the motor sits on a bracket on the side. I know a lot of you are familiar with this. And it's got a belt drive from a pulley on the motor uh, up up to the hand wheel. And it's got one of those beautiful chrome stop motion screws that uh, people love including me. <laughs> Uh, let me go around to the front of it here, or the nose end. Uh, see if I can get up here a little bit closer. 
this has a top drop in bottom bobbin and it is a class 66 bobbin but where the 301 and the 400s and 500s it was called a front drop in bobbin over here on a horizontal rotary hook this is a top drop in bobbin and it's a horizontal hook but it's an oscillating hook. The hook goes back and forth on a bell crank mechanism. Uh, like the model 337 that I did, if you've seen that series on my on my channel. And it's got this cool little uh, lever here called the ejector. And when you push and hold it down, it, it pushes up on the bobbin so that you can pull it out easier pretty cool and it has a um, all metal uh, bobbin case here and it has a very very familiar uh, big chrome presser bar lifter to operate the presser bar and uh, uh, lift it up and it, it's got a 5 16th inch clearance as much as the Rocketeer so you know if you think about that from 1911 <laughs> it had that it had that clearance and the and the feet are attached by a thumb screw just like uh, you know most of the vintage singers were and the feet are individual. It's not like a, a shank, and then it's got the little snap-on different feet. They're all individual. And uh, let me lift that up. And they have a. Got to raise that needle. These are these are uh, straight shank or low shank. These are not the big slant shank, um, like the 301, 400, 500 that I'm used to working with. See that little guy? <laughs> but it's it's got the hinged uh, foot, you know, and it has all kinds of presser feet attachments, hammers and binders and rufflers, and you can you can put on a zigzag attachment and a buttonhole attachment, and I think there's a monogram attachment. Um, but it's it's got a removable face plate there's a little screw up whoops there's a little screw up here that I've already loosened and then there's a thumb screw on the bottom and it comes right off and it's got one of the thread guards in it but here's the uh, you know can you see that okay you know it's got the typical adjustable variable adjustable pressure system on the presser bar just like uh, many many of the vintage singers I did but look at this little stubby uh, needle bar that's the top of the needle bar <laughs> I looked it up and I was like where's the rest of the needle bar <laughs> oh and uh, it's interesting to me when I'm looking like at the needle bar there's no timing marks the timing marks are up here on the needle bar link to the thread take up system so I'm gonna have to learn how to set the height and do the timing on this but the other all metal thread take up system it's it's all like the others that I've done very you know familiar looking to me in, in here and the tension is uh, two discs, but it's the variable numerated from zero to nine, you know, um, with the raised numbers on there, the plus minus, the big chrome knurled knob there. Uh, interesting, the thread spring is uh, different here. It's open-ended here. It kind of comes out and curls up here and just stops. And it, it works the opposite way of all the ones I've, I've ever done. It, it checks the thread down like that, not, not up. And when you thread it, which I'll be doing a video, 
but it, the thread comes under this I forget what this little lever that sticks out is I read it but but it comes under there and then up to the take up lever and down to the needle and stuff so that's a little different that'll be fun to play with the feed system was um, very much like others that I've done with the lever you know this is the whole lever thing and it's got kind of two slots with the lever over here and there's a little pin in here that goes uh, you can see good and I, I kind of like that because you can really see where you're where you're setting it whereas when you only have the lever it's you know the lever is so has a diameter but this has a little pin that goes up from 6 to 30 and then actually a little above that and then this because it's a 1956 model it has reverse feed which a lot of the earlier uh, 99's did not have and it's got this kind of cool clunky looking uh, bobbin winder system up here you put the bobbin on there and then you push it down to the wheel and this latch comes down and and keeps the bobbin from flying off because there's no spring in the spindle and then as it winds and fills it, it's got an auto shut off it pops it off so I like that I like the look of it the chrome and the gold and the black it's a, it's appealing after I've done so many beige ones and then of course I have the the blue and teal singers that I did um, this is the like you run the, the thread through here there's no spring um, to for the thread to go to the bobbin winder it's just the way that you put it through this little uh, bracket here which I'll be showing you later and the motor, going back to the motor for a minute, it's it's hardwired in. There's no, um, you know, the cord's just going right inside the motor housing. So there's no plug and a terminal or anything. So I'm going to have to learn about that and open up this motor and see what this motor looks like in there. You can see the bracket's kind of loose and stuff. But maybe you can tell I, I'm actually kind of excited about it, working on it. And I never thought I would say that about any black Singer machine. Uh, when I was growing up, my mom and aunts and grandma had, you know, Model 15s and 66, I'm assuming they were. And sometimes I had to move them around for them. And I thought, oh man, these things weigh a ton, you know. And I, I think this is, personally, when I lift this, it feels more than 22 pounds. But, but it's, a, it's a cast iron, not cast aluminum like the other ones I've done. And it's got a metal uh, foot controller for speed. And I, I'm pretty sure, just from the heft of it, I'm going to find carbon stacks, some kind of carbon stack inside there. And the cord is in great shape. I mean, the cord feels more like some kind of a rubber than vinyl it's so so flexible for a 62 year old machine and I think it being in the case is what has kept it looking so nice you know uh, any machine I've had that was kept in a case is usually uh, at least dust free this didn't have any dust or rust or gunk or anything on it uh, it's, it's, it's got, I should take that back, it's got some dust and had a lot of lint and stuff around the bobbin area. But I'm going to try and uh, tilt this thing back on its hinges. It sits in this wood base and, and it has hinges. And I'm just going to show you the bottom of it here. If I don't hold on to the base, the whole thing will tip over. Maybe I can gently set it back here. If I uh, is that that's kind of blocking the view a little bit so this is the bell crank system to operate the horizontal hook and it's got a lever going over here to a rod that goes up to get the mechanism power for it 
and it's got this uh, rod over here uh, shaft or whatever that's powered from you know it's, I think from the fork feed and it's a very simple system to move the feed dog and to move the a bell system I mean the bell crank system so it's I mean what could ever go wrong with this thing look at that hmm. so <clears throat> of course I, I tested it just to see uh, you know how, how does this thing sound will it even run and it looked pretty clean and I figured okay I'll just try it out and uh, see if it works let me close up the Oop, let me get back up here so you can see it a little better uh, let me close that up and the light the light worked doesn't give off as much light as the ones that are positioned right under the arm but I'm hoping I can get an LED in there an LED bulb but let's uh, let's run it because it sounds so cute when it runs hmm? like that third 337 it's kinda got that tick tock thing going on with the uh, with the hook you know I don't know if I'll try and slow it down I don't know if you'll be able to tell that the hook is going up and back and up instead of around and around like on the 400s or 500s but when my wife heard it running, she came in here and grabbed some stuff and she, she sewed away on it. And uh, I think my belt is slipping a little bit there. Yeah, <laughs> the belt's slipping, I think. But she, uh, she said, oh yeah, this is mine. She sewed for years on a Model 15 and a Model 66, too. So this reminded her a lot, and that's why she called it cute. Oh, it's so cute. Look how little it is. That one's mine, honey. <laughs> so uh, small but terrible machine, meaning it's compact, but it's got the power. It's got the same motor as the others and, and the same mechanisms and everything. It's just three-quarter size. So... I'm going to be doing a series for this, uh, you know, real basic as I teach myself how to wind, wind the bobbin, thread the needle, um, how to make adjustments up here in the front, take stuff out to clean it or adjust it, the height setting, what, what everything's kind of called, and, and uh, take a look at that motor. Uh, cosmetically, it's pretty good. I see back here. Uh, it's chipped up and back on the motor and unfortunately there's big well to me there's chunks of paint chips out of here and that's from people storing their foot pedals you know up here in the machine and it bouncing around like that so that's a shame but otherwise I'm pretty happy for 25 bucks I don't Seemed like a good deal to me. I don't know what a used one of these usually goes for, but um, I would have paid more than that. I and and I just really the guy lifted the lid. I looked at it. I said, "Yeah, okay," but you got to load it in the car for me because it's too heavy. <laughs> Thanks for watching my intro for cute, and I hope you'll follow along the series for cute as I do some of these other things. And I've got a lot to learn about this uh, model ninety nine. Uh, so, you know, comments are always going to be welcome. And if I say some stuff that's wrong, uh, you know, don't hesitate to correct me. Um, I've been doing research on it, and I found uh, parts lists for like, I think, 11 or 12 different versions of this model. Like the Dash 1, Dash 2, Dash 11, Dash 13, Dash 26... And my understanding was when it first came out, it was a hand crank. 
uh, system. And then it went to a knee control, and then the first uh, electrics were, were uh, in 1926, like I mentioned, with this uh, uh, foot controller, you know, electric foot controller. So, um, it's been around a while, and I know there was treadle. Uh, this, there was uh, treadle, and it seems like I read someplace like this could be converted back to a treadle, um, and and even a knee control maybe, or maybe that was the model sixty six. But anyway, uh, stay tuned and and uh, come back and watch my series for cute the Singer model ninety nine K. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you again.